Many fascinating discoveries have been made throughout our time on this planet, but sometimes these can be truly puzzling, especially when they're made in unlikely locations like the ones you're about to see. Think you'll be surprised? Imagine being the people who came across these things. But it's safe to assume that if your job is to uncover strange stuff like this, things may not be so radical. But for the rest of us, from wild to wonderful to hella weird, these findings are really far out. 15 Bizarre Discoveries Found in Unexpected Places Hidden Doorway Buying a property is one of the biggest milestones in any adult life. It's a place that you can call your own. You work a good amount of years to afford it. And before you ever settle down in one place, you do a little scoping beforehand just so you know what you're buying. That's usually how it goes, but oftentimes circumstances arise that aren't the norm. Up next, a man finds a hidden doorway on his property and freaks out when he enters it. But don't worry, he doesn't find anything sinister. It's quite the opposite, actually. He begins by thinking he found some gold. Sounds a little too good to be true? Just might be. The man's name was Christopher, and he was finally able to afford his dream property. But then he stumbled upon something that would change his life forever. Inside was a hidden doorway. He investigated, and what he found was an eerie tunnel. Of course, he didn't stop there and continued to investigate further. He purchased more than 16 and a half hectares of woodland fields and it was a lot of space to not go rummaging through. When he went through the doorway, it led him to a mine. An abandoned mine, of course. Inside that mine were various rooms. Some of the rooms had writing on the walls. Given the damp and dark conditions, they gave him a spooky vibe. He even thought he saw someone at one point, but there was no one there, nor was there any gold. When he looked it up online, he saw some things that pointed to the fact that it might be haunted. Given that he has such a big property, we don't think there's any reason as to why he would need to go back through the hidden doorway. But if he does, he'll probably be bringing a few ghost hunters with him. He won't be able to promise them any gold, though. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. This discovery will give you nightmares. A little blue humanoid in a dark cave carrying a pirate sword? No thanks. But let's dissect this for a moment. Could this be some sort of hobbit-like creature? They did exist at one time. 60,000 years ago, diminutive beings dwelled on the Indonesian island of Flores. Alongside Komodo dragons, woolly mammoths, and real-life rodents of unusual size, the now-extinct humans stood less than four feet tall, with brains one-third the size of living people. Yet, they made stone tools, butchered meat, and somehow crossed miles of ocean to colonize their tropical home. The thought of hobbits persisting until at least 50,000 years ago is nevertheless exciting. They very well could have encountered our own species. Homo sapiens, thought to have reached Australia 65,000 years ago. Perhaps modern humans migrating down under met and maybe killed hobbits along the way. So if this is the case, we totally understand why this little blue sword-yielding creature might be upset by the interruption. Is it bizarre? Yes. Can we explain it? No. What do you have to say? Leave a comment with the hashtag sweet topic. The city that never existed. It was supposed to be a city that would rival Los Angeles. Some called it a pipe dream. Others call it one big mistake. But what happened was a city that never came to be. The name was going to be California City, and it was going to sit nicely on 320 square kilometers of Mojave Desert. The layout was built, and it was pretty much a skeleton of a city. Because even though there were rows of streets and a park, there were no houses or residents to be found. It was just a layout ready for people to move in. Almost like the foundation of a city, yet no one was occupying it. Maybe even like a turned-off Hollywood set. That's still how it stands today. But that's not how it always used to be. In 2008, there was a population of 14,556 people living to the southwest of the empty city. One thing that the city does is operate the California City Correctional Center, which houses 2,300 beds. There's also a Hyundai Kia testing site. It doesn't seem like it's a place that pushes people away from it, but it does seem to attract more birds than it does people. And that's because it happens to be one of the top three bird destinations in Southern California. And this is probably because of Silver Saddle Club at Galileo Hill. 
It attracts thousands of birds that migrate along the Pacific Highway. But some people come by also as it's a popular location for dirt bikers and some tourists. In any case, this city may still have its day in the sun, but until then, it'll remain deserted. The Pond Church Sometimes, there's a lot of criticism when it comes to religion. Without going deep into it, there's one criticism that stands out as a modern-day problem, and that's having a church that's way too big. They're called mega churches, and there are a lot of people that don't like them out there. But luckily for them, we might have found something for them, the world's smallest church. This one isn't good for anyone with claustrophobia, but if you can't stand the mega churches out there, this might be for you. The name of it is the Cross Island Chapel, and it sits right in the middle of a pond. This tiny white clapboard chapel sticks out like a sore thumb as it's surrounded by a lush pond while being on a floating jetty. This little church was built in 1989 and it's only about 30 square feet. You could probably fit three people, so that wouldn't be classified as a giant mass on Sunday. But three's a crowd, right? In our reality, it's not great for big gatherings. Despite that, it's open to the public upon request. A sign nearby says it's available for special occasions and even meditation. So if you need a small wedding or a place to meditate, Cross Island Chapel might be for you. <laughs> Forest Xylophone Everyone loves a little classical music. Even today, with all the changes in the music industry, classical music has endured. It's been around for decades, and there are still classics today when you hear them, you instantly know which song it is. There's just something soothing and sophisticated about classical music. The same could be said about some of the instruments used in this genre of music, the piano or the xylophone. But whether it's the music or the instrument, something is jarring about hearing music when you least expect it, even if it's beautiful classical music. Hypothetically, you're walking through a Japanese forest and there's music. Wouldn't it be a little bit spooky? Well, in one Japanese forest, you can hear Bach playing via a xylophone. But don't worry, this isn't some sort of ghost concert. It's created by a company, and it was designed for advertisement purposes. The company behind this is named Docomo, and their little creation features hundreds of different sized pieces of wood that sound different in terms of notes when struck. It's a wooden ball that does the playing. It hits each appropriate note to form a Bach masterpiece. The masterpiece we're talking about is Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring. One of the most moving parts about the whole thing is that it's designed from 100% raw made materials. It sounds like a project that just keeps getting better and better, and it's worth checking out. You should probably like classical music if you're gonna take the trip. <laughs> Mystery Phone Booth With all the technological advances out there, the world no longer needs old equipment. They're just things that aren't needed anymore like answering machines, beepers, and maybe even radios. Because cell phones alone have taken the place of many old devices that were once considered revolutionary. One of the old pieces of equipment that are no longer needed and that you no longer typically see are phone booths. Sure, they may still be in some locations, and a lot of them just haven't been removed yet. But what if we told you that there's one mysterious phone booth sitting right on the roof of a place? Not only is it odd to see a phone booth today, but it's also odd to see a phone booth on the roof somewhere. The place that we're talking about is in Lincoln, Illinois. There's one phone booth that looks like it almost fell right out of the sky and landed on top of a building. But it's not the type of phone booth that you would crawl up there and start to make a call to your grandmother. It was installed to help warn against massive storms. This dates back to the 1960s when weather prediction technology wasn't as advanced as it is today. People needed service and they needed to know whether or not the storms were coming. So one of the best ways to do that was to get a high vantage point and take a look for themselves. That's where the phone booth comes into play, or at least the booths that look like the one on the roof. You can't just stand on the roof and start letting people know about the weather, especially when the weather is bad. You would blow right off of it. But if you stand inside the booth on the roof and get the vantage point, then you have more stability. It was a practical solution to a complicated problem. Luckily today, we have satellites and cell phones for that matter. <laughs> trophy Bridge It's not easy to get a trophy. You usually have to do something amazing or win something to get one. 
but just being around them can be uplifting in times of stress because seeing a trophy can be inspiring. And if you agree with us, then maybe you should take a trip down the trophy bridge. This is where you'll find an array of trophies all lined up on support beams in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's being called an anonymous art project, and it sits right beneath Longfellow Bridge. The only thing not anonymous about it is that a local attorney put it there. This project began in 2014 and sees hundreds of trophies lining the steel support beams beneath Longfellow Bridge, and it's not just something that people see while passing by. People all around the world come to visit and contribute their trophies to the project. It started as something small, but has since grown into something crazy in size. It's also not just any trophy that you'll find along these beams. Amongst them is a rather special item to note. It's the 2010 Herbert Schneider Award given out by the Society for the Advancement of American Philosophy to Professors Hillary and Ruth Ann Putman, which is pretty significant just to leave under a bridge. If you got a kick out of this bridge, then check out the area because there are a handful of guerrilla urban installations all over the place. <laughs> movie Star Boot We officially live in an era where movie props are valued almost more than gold sometimes. People clamor to go to exhibitions that see displays of old movie items. There's also a huge market on places like eBay where people are willing to buy IO memorabilia from wrestling shows and baseball games. People love interesting items from the media that they've grown up with. The more iconic a scene is, the more likely that someone will want to be around the items that were in the scene. This is the case coming out of Mount Hood where actress Reese Witherspoon filmed a movie scene that shows her throwing her boot over a mountainside. Well. One lucky hiker found that boot. The movie that we're talking about is called Wild, and this is the scene where Witherspoon sits down at the edge of a cliff, takes off her two small hiking boots, and hurls them over it. It's a memorable scene, because Witherspoon's character is all worked up and saying a lot of profanity. Plus, it starts the movie off. Well, a man named Chris Kesting was such a fan of that scene that he traveled to the location to look for that exact boot. It only took him 15 minutes and then he found it. He said that it wasn't hard to find because of the red laces, and it only made sense because how many other shoes would be out there in the wilderness. He said that the shoes did have some wear and tear because of how they had been sitting out there in the sun for a while, but other than that, it was the shoe from the movie. Now that's a cool find. Roman Mosaic Coffee Table It's always a shame when art goes missing from a museum. The worst can be assumed once it goes missing. No one wants the piece to get damaged. It would also be a shame if someone resold it for a lot of money and then it just went further down the rabbit hole of getting lost. And then there are the stranger cases. We're talking about the cases where a priceless piece of art goes missing and then just becomes a coffee table for a while. It sounds pretty ridiculous, but this is the case for the priceless Roman mosaic that once decorated a ship used by the Emperor Caligula. It was used at the coffee table for about 50 years in an apartment in New York City. It was discovered by a man named Dario del Buffalo, who happened to be an Italian expert on ancient stone marble. Back in 2013, he was in New York and had given a lecture there and he was signing copies of his book. In the book, there was a picture of a long lost mosaic that had formed part of a floor on two vast party ships commissioned by Caligula. Dario overheard people speaking that they had the mosaic in their apartment. When he tracked them down, he confirmed that it was there. And he also confirmed it was an innocent purchase back in the day for the people. Now it's a real shame that a piece of art had been on a coffee table for so long, but at least it was found and will now be kept in better conditions, rather than holding up a cup of Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> the Soundgarden You may have heard of the band Soundgarden with the late great lead singer Chris Cornell, but what about an actual sound garden? It sounds pretty majestic, a garden that just emits beautiful noises. This is the name of an art installation that doubles as a huge musical instrument created by Douglas R. Hollis. It's located on the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Western Service Center campus. It's located on a hill that overlooks Lake Washington in Seattle. It has giant pipe-like structures that murmur, whistle, and even howl when the wind blows. In addition to that, It's composed of 21 feet high steel tower structures and to this day attracts many visitors all around the world. If you like music and art installations, this may just be the place for you. 
Desert Filing Cabinet No matter where you go in this world, you'll always find this site that doesn't quite make sense upon arrival. It may even leave you scratching your head. Sometimes what you find can look like the remnants of a scavenger hunt gone wrong. This next discovery is considered a library. Upon first glance, it may not seem that way, but the sign right next to the site says library. It comes out of the desert of New Mexico. It was inspired by American artist Gordon Matta Clark's site-specific work from 1973's Fake Estates. And that piece of material was satire, designed to poke fun at businesses and individuals who had been buying up acres of land on Mars. This library in the desert was created in 2004. What it is exactly is a file cabinet cemented into a concrete arc on a rectangular piece of land in New Mexico. Its creator, Matthew Passmore, said that the idea was to make it look like the cabinet grew out naturally. Inside this little art, the display has a horseshoe, a library, and a mailbox. Now that we know its origins, it's not as spooky as it seems, but it's still pretty cool when you look at it. Million Dollar Point One thing you learn early on as a kid is that emotions can rule you. When you have a sibling, you often do things out of spite. Hypothetically, you want the toy that your sibling has, but you're not allowed to have it, so maybe you'll break it. Of course, we all grow out of those things, but they do sometimes occasionally seep into being an adult to an extent. And with that in mind, we've come to let you know that it's not just people who do things out of spite, but also sometimes the U.S. military. We'll explain. It's dubbed the Million Dollar Point. Located in Luganville, Vanuatu, it's where the U.S. military threw out millions of dollars worth of goods only to spite the British and the French. Talk about some sibling rivalry. This all dates back to a little after World War II when the U.S. abandoned the Vanuatan island of Espiritu Santo after no longer needing to occupy it for war. The military had dumped millions of dollars of goods into the ocean just so the French and British couldn't have them. Now, snorkelers and scuba divers have found some of the equipment. So why did the military dump it there? It's because once America left the base after the war, everything that was left over from military equipment to even Coca-Cola had been offered to the French and British at a very low price. But they didn't want to buy it. They wanted it for free. America was pretty upset about this. So despite the British and the French, the military had made a decision to drive all the vehicles of food, equipment, and whatever else they had to the southern coast and just dumped it there. A lot of it, of course, has been destroyed so that no one could take it. What do you think? Was that the right move to make, or was it petty? Secret Mountain Archive We've all heard of Getty Images, and when you think of them, you probably think of their digital versions. Because, after all, there's pretty much all we see online. But what if we told you that there's a secret archive on a mountain that secures around 11 million Getty Images? That's a whole lot of pictures. They're located in a cold and heavily guarded limestone mine right near Pittsburgh. It's called the Batman Archive, and it's about 90 minutes from Pittsburgh. It's also super high security, so you can't just waltz in there with your ID. The other problem is that the archive is hundreds of feet down below ground. It was 85 years ago when 32-year-old Otto Batman started his collection, which now turned into 11 million images. It's no secret as to why the archive is so secured. That's 85 years of collecting. It's thought that the man loved books, their images, and documenting as much as he could, documenting a lot of the photos that came from books. In addition to that, he wanted to save them in some way. That's how the collection started. And to this day, we think that it's been kept in pretty good shape. So the next time you make fun of your mom for having too many photos on her phone, just remember how many Getty images there are. Caspian Sea Monster It's a vehicle like no other. Not only is it a sight to behold, but it's a piece of history. And now that piece of history is taking its last journey. It's the Caspian Sea Monster, and it was beached for over a year on the western shores of the Caspian Sea. From afar, it looks like something out of a movie, and it looks so big that it probably couldn't fly. But it did in the past. That past was a very long time ago. And now it's done flying and has been moved to one of its final destinations, a stretch of coast near Russia's southernmost point. Back in the day, somewhere around the 1990s, the Caspian was abandoned after the collapse of the Soviet Union. It was left to rot away at a naval base about 62 miles up the coast from Durban. 
This vehicle was one of the last designs to come out of the Soviet Union ground effect vehicle program and remains a one-of-a-kind event in its retirement. <laughs> Martini Tree Skiing can be exhilarating. It keeps you on your toes while letting the cool air breeze by you. There's nothing like going down the ski slope. But for some, it can be a nerve-wracking activity. Not nerve-wracking in the sense that it's dreadful, but nerve-wracking where it can be a little scary at times. Who doesn't get a little nervous while they're going down the mountain at a high speed? Well, down in the Taos Ski Valley in New Mexico, about 60 years ago, there's a story of one woman who had martinis hidden away in the trees. And it was because during a ski lesson, a woman was freaking out because of bad lighting conditions. So, to calm her nerves, her teacher gave her a drink, a dry martini to be more specific. And after that drink, her confidence came back. And because it helped her so much, she stationed others down the mountain. It was almost like a checkpoint for her. There are no longer any martinis hidden among the slopes, but it was once a thing. It's probably good that it isn't a thing anymore because there would be a lot of drunk skiers out there. <laughs> president's Heads Are you a history buff who loves all things presidents? So, what if we told you you could go to a site where there's 43 president's heads just lying around? That's what you could have gotten years ago when you walked through a farm down in Croker, Virginia. You'd be greeted by giant busts of presidents, which were all made for the now defunct Open Air Museum, which had previously allowed visitors to walk near the busts. They were created by a sculptor and inspired by sites like Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. For a brief time in 2004, they were open to the public once more, but then about 10 years later, the heads lost funding and were moved to a different location where they all suffered some damage via travel. There was a point where they were almost all destroyed. Lucky for us, they're still out there, although they now look a little bit eerier. The world can be a crazy and unpredictable place. You never quite know what you're going to find next. Whether it's a bunch of president's heads or martinis in the snow on ski slopes, it's an amazing world out there, but one thing's for sure, things can get bizarre.